Welcome. My name is Dr. Adam Ingrao. I'm the Veterans Liaison for Michigan State University Extension. And today I'm going to be talking about opportunities in agriculture for veterans. You know, as veterans, we transition from the military and a lot of us are looking for that next mission. And agriculture offers a really great opportunity for you as an individual to not only be able to work outside, be able to experience the natural pace of nature, but also be able to continue serving your country by protecting our food security by being the next generation of farmers. So today what I'm gonna talk about is a lot of programming that's available um, to you as uh, veterans uh, that you can take advantage of to either start your career in agriculture or continue supporting your career in agriculture. So there's a lot of opportunities in agriculture for veterans, um, you know, education opportunities, uh, farmer training opportunities, apprenticeship, there's federal programs that can support you. There are support organizations out there that can support you. There's grants and then there's also even branding opportunities specific to you as a veteran that help identify your product and, and, and really make it stand out in a marketplace. So we'll start with education. So you as a veteran, um, many of you have educational benefits, both uh, GI Bill benefits, whether that's Montgomery GI Bill benefits, post 9-11 GI Bill benefits, or vocational rehabilitation benefits for those of you that have disability ratings um, high enough to be eligible for those, uh, for those benefits. So with those benefits, you can continue at your education. And for those of you looking to get into agriculture that maybe don't have a history of being in agriculture, Really, education is your first, your first stop. You need to get that foundational understanding of how agriculture works, you know, a, a background in plant science or, or maybe a background in animal husbandry if you're getting into livestock. But you need those base understandings of things to be able to be successful. And it's really an opportunity for you to get some great training while receiving benefits, um, your GI Bill benefits or your voc rehab benefits. Yeah, you can go a two-year route or you can go a four-year route. And, and granted, this is, you know, what we're going to be talking about in this lecture is not comprehensive. This is just to give you an idea of what's available to you. But what we have in Michigan, as far as programs available uh, through Michigan State University, is we have kind of a two-year track or a four-year track. For those of you that are not interested in going back and getting a four-year degree, you know, everybody understands that. You know, a lot of us are already well into our, our careers. Maybe this is a second career for you and you're just not interested in going back and sitting, you know, in a classroom with a bunch of 18 year olds um, at this point in your life. And that's fine. We have programs through MSU and our Institute of Ag Tech that allow you to basically just focus on the skill sets that you want. So over 20 different programs available through this. And basically it's, it, they're, they're partnerships with, um, with community colleges. So you see Bay College listed here. Bay College is, is up by me in the Upper Peninsula and they're one of our partners. And so we basically offer these training programs through our partner, you know, our partner colleges, our, our community colleges. So that means that a lot of these programs are near you. You don't have to be at, at, in East Lansing at MSU's campus in order to take advantage of these programs. Um, these often are certificate programs. Some of them are AA programs, um, but some of them are certificate programs. So it just depends on what you're looking at as far as um, what skill set you're trying to get. Um, but they are available. You, they are uh, available to uh, to be received GI Bill benefits and voc rehab benefits. So you can use those benefits to get those skill sets. Now, the nice thing about the the ag tech programs is if you get done with the ag tech program, you spend you know 18 months in that program. If you get done with it and you realize, hey, you know this school thing's not that bad. Maybe I want to continue my education. Those credits transfer right over to MSU, and you can enroll right as an MSU student through the ag tech program. So that's, that's kind of a neat thing with ag tech is that those credits that you're taking transfer right over to a four-year degree if you decide to go that route. Now, the four-year degree obviously is, a, is another opportunity to learn. And, and this is actually the, the way I went um, about getting back into agriculture. I worked in agriculture growing up, but I wasn't an expert. I was working on picking crews and, and, and working in packing sheds. I wasn't, I wasn't the one making the decisions. Um, but when I got out of the military, I wanted to, to work in agriculture. And so I went the four year route and I can say that that was a great route for me. But again, it's not for everybody. But if you as a veteran are looking to get into agriculture, really kind of the areas you wanna be looking in and the universities you wanna be looking at are your land grant institutions like Michigan State University. These institutions are set up to be the hub of agricultural education and research in their state. And each state has a land grant institution. 
there's really kind of pretty much every degree you could think of in agriculture offered at these universities because they're big research institutions focused on agriculture. So you could, you know, study anything from plant pathology to horticulture to entomology to soil science to animal husbandry, all sorts of different things. And so there's all of these different degree tracks that you could take to really become an expert in these areas. And that's what you should be thinking about if you have these benefits and you want to go back to school, this is an opportunity to not only become an expert, but learn from the experts in these areas. And um, really great opportunity. Again, you can use your GI Bill benefits and your VOC rehab benefits for that. For those of you that are not interested in going back to, to university, and, and, and again, that's something we totally, everybody understands, right? It's a big commitment. Some of us are just not at that place in our life anymore, and we're ready to just kind of move on and get the training we need to do the things we want to do. There are farmer training programs out there to, to support that. And I'm going to talk about a few of them here in, in Michigan, and, and even uh, one that's out of state. Um, as well, and, and a national program as well. So we're going to talk about a few different areas, but again, these are not comprehensive lists. So I encourage you, you know, if you are interested in, in some of these training programs, reach out to me and, and you'll have, have my contact information both at the beginning of this lecture and the end of this lecture. So feel free to contact me. There's a lot of programs out there and, and I do work with, with just across the entire country with a lot of these programs. So let's highlight a few of them. Well, the one program I will highlight is, is a program I actually run at Michigan State University Extension, the Heroes to Hives program. This is the largest ag training program for military veterans uh, and their dependents in the country. Nearly a thousand alumni uh, of this program from 25 different states have gone through this program in the last five years. It is a nine month beekeeping education program. So it is a hybrid program that we teach online and on ground. Um, Anybody that has served in the US military, no matter where they're located in the world, can take the program. Some of our students just do the online curriculum. Some also do some of the on-ground programming with us. This is our certificate program. So you actually can get a certificate from this program. And the thing that we're adding this year to the program is that if you want to continue your beekeeping education, our course will actually count towards the apprenticeship level certification of the Great Plains Master Beekeeping Program offered for, through the University of Nebraska. So not only do you, can you, if you complete this program, you get a certificate from MSU, you can also continue your education to become a master beekeeper. It is a entirely free program for you as a, as a veteran, as active duty personnel, National Guard, reserves, and your immediate dependents. So they can participate as well, your spouse or even your children over the age of 18. It is a, a great program to be a part of. And if you're interested in more, uh, learning more about the program, I encourage you to go to our heroes2hives.com website. Enrollment is open currently. So if you wanna participate in this program for 2021, you need to get registered by the end of February and you'll find the registration information right there on the website. Another great program that we have at MSU that a lot of veterans have taken uh, part in is the Organic Farmer Training Program offered at the Student Organic Farm on MSU's main campus. So this is a program that takes place on ground in East Lansing. Um, it is a nine month program as well. So a lot like Heroes to Hives, March through November. So the season that we have in, in Michigan. And, um, and they typically meet on Mondays. Now this, this does change kind of every year, but they typically are meeting a full day on Mondays um, in previous years. And basically you go through the entire course, you're doing some you know, online work, also coming in and doing a you know, solid day's work on the farm every week. And basically you get to learn everything from crop planning all the way to post-harvest handling and everything in between. It's a great program. A lot of veterans have gone through this and really speak highly of it. It does have a fee associated with it. So it's about $4,000 to take this program, but there are scholarships available. And again, this is a program that you would be registering um, with them. There is, uh, you can find the registration information and program information at the website you see below. But again, this is a program that is in East Lansing on ground. So this is, a, you know, this is something you would be coming to East Lansing for. All right, an out-of-state program that I love to highlight because it is just such a great program is the SAVE program. That's the Service Member Agriculture Vocation Education Program offered in Kansas. This is based out of Manhattan, Kansas. And this is a, a really great program developed by some amazing veterans that, that have been leading this. And they cover a whole bunch of different um, 
uh, different areas of agriculture and you can kind of concentrate on some areas. In fact, they even have a commercial beekeeping track that you can focus on, but lots of different program areas in there. It's a 12 month program. It is eligible for GI Bill and vocational rehabilitation benefits. There are some tuition fees that go in into that and there is a residency program for this because they do want to be attracting veterans from all over the country so if you're interested in learning more about the save program which is a program specifically for service members um, and and learning agricultural training based out of kansas you want to check them out at the savefarm.org the dairy grazing apprenticeship program this is a national apprenticeship program um, that is offered basically for those individuals that want to learn to become the next generation of dairy farmers. And this is a really important part of American agriculture. I'm sure, I'm sure many of you have heard about the, the problems facing the dairy industry, but you know, from my perspective, when we see kind of you know, a, a, um, a, a, a reevaluation of, of industries, you know, a lot of times that's a good opening when you see these larger manufacturers and larger processing facilities shutting down. It's a good opportunity for smaller farmers to come in and fill that need. So this could be a good opportunity for a lot of you. It is, um, this is a program that we do have um, based out of MSU. So it's based out of the Kellogg Biological Station at MSU. But there's, the way it works is basically that you are becoming an apprentice under a under a, a dairy uh, farmer and, and someone that they have basically vetted through this program to be a mentor. And so it's basically a mentorship program. So it is GI Bill and Voc Rehab eligible. There's two years of employment and training that are part of this program. So you do get actually a stipend if you're a veteran to go through this program. It's throughout the United States and it is the Dairy Grazing Apprenticeship Program that you wanna check out. So that's dga-national.org is where you can find out more. Um, or you can contact us at MSU uh, to learn more about that happening here in Michigan. All right, now I'm gonna jump into some federal programs and just talk real quick about some of the resources that are available to you through the federal government, and that'd be through the USDA. So the United States Department of Agriculture is our big agency that handles all things agriculture in the United States. Within USDA, there are many sub-agencies, and so I'm gonna be talking about some of those sub-agencies and the function that they play and your lives as a farmer veteran. So number one is the Farm Service Agency. So the Farm Service Agency is a sub-agency under the USDA that is really focused on a couple of different areas. And one of those areas is farm numbers. So this is actually the agency that issues a farm number to your farm. For, that, for those of you that this is an unfamiliar term, a farm number is a, is a number basically that is issued to you as a farmer that links you, your tax records, and that property all together. And the reason that they do that is because when you apply for USDA programs, they need to be able to verify all that information to check your eligibility. You know, what, what are you basically making? You know, are the statements that you're, you're making regarding your income? and your, which affect eligibility in many USDA programs, are they true? And they use IRS records to be able to prove, to, to verify that. You know, where is the farm and who owns it? All of that is basically um, lumped in into this farm number. So once you get a farm number, that's kind of the entry point to any USDA program. Now, programs that FSA also offers are their farm loan programs. They offer operating loans um, as well. These are low interest loans that are available uh, to you through the USDA. However, there is limited eligibility. So the way that you can qualify for a USDA loan is essentially you have to be rejected by traditional lenders. So there is a process to this. It's not, this loan program is really, there is kind of an, uh, a program for folks that may not have any other options as far as loan programs to start a farm enterprise. So, um, so there are some limited eligibility for these programs. You can check out more of that information um, at fsa.usda.org, or excuse me, .gov. All right, uh, USDA, um, so that was the Farm Service Agency. We also have another sub-agency within USDA that a lot of folks inter interact with as farmers called the Natural Resources Conservation Service. So NRCS is really a, a, a sub-agency of USDA that is focused on conservation. And so there's a lot of programs that they use to basically help kind of increase um, sustainability and conservation efforts on farms. 
The conservation programs that they offer, there's a lot of different programs, but basically what those programs um, kind of entail is a lot of them entail uh, basically signing over land to a conservation program so that you are basically um, kind of conserving that area. There's also um, programs that are called um, the Environmental Quality Incentives Program. So this is a, a program within NRCS that a lot of veterans use to do different uh, conservation and improvements on their farm. And there's a few listed here. So habitat management. So pollinator habitat has been a hot, hot, hot topic over the years. And there's a habitat uh, program that they offer where there's a cost share for buying pollinator seed. Um, there's hoop houses. So hoop houses are a great way for season extension uh, within northern climates to make that season go a little bit further. And um, they offer a program that is, a, again, a kind of a reimbursement program where they cover part of the cost of installing a hoop house on your farm. They also have grazing programs as well um, that are available. So a lot of different uh, conservation programs through this. The thing that you need to know as a veteran when you are working with NRCS and these, these conservation programs is that there, there is what they have called veteran preference as part of these programs. Now, a USDA agent cannot ask you if you are a veteran. You have to self-identify as a veteran. And so when you go in and start working with USDA, you need to make sure that those USDA service uh, members know that you are a veteran. So those individuals that are working the service office uh, for USDA, make sure that they know you're a veteran and, and advocate for yourself in that manner. What this means though, is that veteran preference basically helps you out when you're applying for these EQIP programs. So for example, there are basically three categories that, that, that applications are lumped into, low, medium, and high priority funding. And so these are competitive applications. What Veterans Preference offers you is that when you apply for these programs, you are put into the, the high priority category for, fun, for funding this uh, conservation effort. So it just it, generally what we see is that veterans that apply for these programs and receive Veterans uh, Preference generally will get these programs funded the first year they apply for them. A lot of other farmers may not have that luxury. They may have to apply for these several years before they actually get, get funding to support these efforts. So know that you need to be uh, your be own best advocate all the time, but when you're working with USDA particularly. Some other programs that are available, um, the North Central Region SARE program uh, is basically a program through USDA that seeks to help fund opportunities and education for individuals working in sustainable agriculture. I happen to be the state uh, co-coordinator for this. So if you are interested in any of these SARE programs and anything that I talk about here in general, uh, please feel free to reach out. But I do oversee these programs here in the state of Michigan. Um, basically, and I'm gonna draw your attention to one grant opportunity that we have through this program that farmers are eligible for, and then also our learning center. So the Farmer Rancher Grant is one of several grants that we offer through SARE that you can apply for as a farmer to do an education or research activity related to sustainable agriculture. So maybe you have an idea about, you know, I'll talk from my own experience as a beekeeper, maybe your ideas on how to help overwinter bees better in Michigan. And you've got some sort of a tech device that you're using to kind of increase the sustainable nature of beekeeping in Northern climates. That would be a great project to see, to see you do as a research project, right? Maybe it's an education project, and, and some, I'll use an example of a, of a previously funded project. We had a, a, a veteran um, a few years back who proposed that he wanted to do a nature walk that had kind of informative placards around a pollinator habitat around his farm, and Sarah funded that. We funded that because it's an educational opportunity for folks to learn more about sustainable agriculture, particularly pollinator habitat. So there's lots of different ways that you can um, incorporate education or research activities onto your farm, and they could be eligible to be funded through a SARE grant. Now, the Farmer Rancher grant, you can apply for it as an individual or as a team. Um, so if you're applying as an individual, those are $9,000 um, grants for 24 months. Or if you have a team of individuals coming together, that there may be an increase in the, that, um, that total amount you're eligible for. But they're two-year grants and generally $9,000 is what the budget's going to be on those. The other thing that we have available through SARE, which is probably one of our best kept secrets, and I don't want to say that it's intentionally a secret, but just not a lot of people know about it, is our learning center. So at our website, northcentralsare.org, you will find a tab for our learning center. And that learning center houses one of the most comprehensive and extensive collections of literature on sustainable agriculture in the United States. 
free books, free fact sheets, free videos. There's courses and curriculum for those of you that are educators. Really great resources for those of you that are trying to be as sustainable as possible in your agricultural endeavors. And I really encourage you to spend some time looking through those learning resources. Just a tremendous, tremendous resource for anybody working in agriculture. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about support organizations that you can access here in Michigan that can help you as veterans, uh, as you continue to serve your nation as the next generation of farmers. Okay, so one of the activities that we have, uh, or one of the organizations that we have that, that I've done a lot of activities with over the years is Michigan Agribility. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Agribility, uh, Agribility basically is there to offer assistance for individuals with disabilities and help them continue farming. I'm a service-connected disabled vet and I'm a beekeeper. And you can see here in this picture, this is uh, Ned Stoller, who is our ag engineer at uh, Michigan Agribility and works with me at the Heroes, with, with me on programming and um, accessible technologies for beekeepers through the Heroes to Hives program. And what he's showing here is a hive lift that he's made in his own shop uh, to help lift those heavy beehives. You know, other areas of agriculture that a lot of us with uh, disabilities struggle with is if you have say an amputation or a back injury or something like that, getting up into a piece of equipment can be very difficult. Ned's done, you know, designs as far as how to take somebody from a wheelchair and put them in the cab of a, of a combine so that they continue farming. So really the resources that they offer you are disability assistance, so letting you, doing an evaluation with you to help you understand how to better work on your farm, how to be, how to use ergonomics to um, really reduce the number of injuries that you have, and then also integrating assistive technology into your farm to help with your disabilities. Now, this is a completely free resource that Michigan Agribility offers. It is funded through the USDA. Um, and, so, and so this is a great resource. If you are one of those individuals, a veteran that is struggling with a disability, that's making it hard for you to farm, whatever that, that impact may be, this is an organization you should reach out to. MichiganAgribility.org is where you can find out more information about them. Michigan Food and Farming Systems Veterans and Agriculture Network. This is a statewide network here in the state of Michigan that it's a veteran led network. So these are veterans that work together to basically offer um, opportunities for uh, education through workshops, through mentorship. Um, this organization is also in, uh, the key, Michigan Food and Farming System is also the organization that puts on the Michigan Family Farms Conference, which is one of our largest small farms conferences uh, in the state. Um, which typically happens um, in February of every year. They do a lot of work with USDA navigation. So we talked about USDA and working with them. If you're a little, uh, you know, kind of intimidated by going into a USDA office, um, one of the services that they offer is they help you work with USDA. So help you understand how to, how to work with USDA and help you navigate that service. In addition, they do a lot of advocacy, both at the state and national level for veterans benefits um, and for veterans being included in farm bill programs. So they do a lot of that as well. More information about them at MIFS.org. The Farmer Veteran Coalition, um, this is the nation's largest uh, ag organization for military personnel. Um, over 13,000 members, and I know it's a lot higher than that. Um, that's the last update I think I had uh, quite some time ago, but I think they're probably probably peaking over 20,000 members now. They basically um, really are kind of the hub for a lot of us that have worked in agriculture or working in agriculture. They offer workshops all over the country. There is a Michigan chapter here in the state of Michigan, so that's something to check out. But um, really some of the big things that they do for, for veterans, and I'll talk about a couple of their programs here in just a moment, um, but one of the big things they do is they put on national conferences. So they have the National Stakeholders Conference every year in November, and then they also have a Women's Farmers National Conference as well. Um, so those are both, you know, all veteran focused, but kind of, but basically taking agriculture um, and bringing us as individuals, as, as veterans together over these conversations and education around agriculture at these conferences. Really great resource. But really some of the best resources that they have, and I'm going to mention this one right here is the fellowship fund is one of the best resources that they have. This is kind of one of their flagship programs. 
It is the only program I know of in the United States that basically offers veterans the opportunity to get funding for their agriculture endeavors. It is kind of like a grant, but it's not truly a grant because most grants require you to have deliverables as far as, you know, what is your, what are you going to do as far as research and how are you going to report that or what education activity are you going to do and what are the results of that education activity? This is not like that. This is essentially a $5,000, they call it, I call it a fellowship to help you with some sort of ag endeavor on your farm. I've received this in the past um, and it basically helped me build um, our apiary business, our beekeeping business, um, by being able to, you know, ask for funding to help me increase capacity when we were showing growth already. This is a, a competitive uh, grant, and we'll call it that. Uh, it's a competitive grant, so you're going to be competing against other individuals, and so you need to make a great case for yourself and the project that you're doing and why it's going to make a big impact on your farm. But you can apply for up to $5,000. This program is an annual program, um, typically opens in the winter-ish months of the year. And um, basically they wanna see a, a project, like what project do you wanna do on your farm that's gonna increase your revenue capacity, your, uh, your sustainability, um, be able to let you grow, something like that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, farmvetco.org is the organization. You do need to be a member of the organization to participate in these programs but the memberships are free. Another program that FVC offers is the Homegrown by Heroes program. This is their national branding program, which helps set your products uh, uh, out, you know, in a, in a crowd of, of agricultural products. You know, a lot of folks, you know, especially when we get into uh, market vegetables and things like that, a lot of folks grow tomatoes and peppers. And it's hard to make your product stand out in those types of marketplaces where there's a lot of competition with particular uh, commodities. One of the ways that you can do that is through this program. And so you see the label right there in the top right corner, um, Homegrown by Heroes. You apply for this program uh, through Farmer Veteran Coalition as a member, and they basically uh, give you permission to use this branding on your products. And so it helps you stand out in the marketplace. You know, if you have a, you know, a, uh, a steak in one package and a steak in another package, and one of them's got the homegrown by heroes labels on it. it you know, that helps the, the consumer understand that that's a veteran produced product. And, you know, for me as a veteran, when I see that, I'm going to buy that product all the time over, a, over a competitor's product because I know I'm supporting a veteran farm. So it is a way to set yourself apart. And again, that's a program available through farmer veteran coalition at farmvetco.org. Another branding program, that, and, and this is a verification program as well, that helps you stand out in the marketplace in Michigan as a good agricultural producer, uh, one that is environmentally conscious, is the MEAT program, the Michigan Agriculture Environmental Assurance Program. This is a voluntary environmental verification program that is free through MEAT. And basically, they, they come out and do an entire assessment of your farm, looking at risk management, they help you with planning, they do inspections, and this is all free, but they can give you great information on how to make your farm more sustainable. This is my wife and I pictured here at our farm here in the Upper Peninsula, and this was one of the first things we did when we, when we bought this farm, was made sure that as we were starting to plan out our farm, that MEEP was there with us to ensure that we were making the right choices um, so that we could ensure that our farm was environmentally sustainable. Um, with the MEAT program, once you finish uh, that verification process, you get this great branding that you can put right out in front of your farm. And it's a great way to let your customer base know that you are really there for not only them as your customers, but also supporting our planet as an environmentally conscious farmer. Uh, MEAP.org is the organization that you can look at to, do, to learn more about that. All right, so those were just a few resources that you as veterans and opportunities that you as veterans have here in the state of Michigan to support your, uh, um, your veteran endeavor into agriculture. Um, as the veterans liaison for MSU Extension, I'm also an agricultural entomologist and have a lot of background in plant science and production agriculture. I'm here to support you. Um, I work with veterans all across the nation to help them basically identify you know, best ways to start businesses, things to be thinking about as they're getting into agriculture, programs that can support them. And so if you have any questions regarding um, what we've talked about in this lecture or anything regarding your endeavor into agriculture and ways that you know, MSU or other organizations may be able to support you, 
I am here to support you in that endeavor. And so this is my contact information here. Fee please feel free to reach out at any time. And finally, thank you for your service to our nation. And thanks for joining me today.